Hello friends, my name is Lee, and I create videos about photography as an art and as a lifestyle. Recently, we've been talking more and more about actual film photography here on the channel. It's fun. Raymond and I are shooting more film than we both have since like 2003. <laughs> and it's helping us creatively, both with our film and digital photography, even when shooting on our phones, which we inevitably do. If it's a camera, we usually like it. As charming as it is to shoot film in 2024, aside from the creative upsides that we get from it, there are certainly some downsides. As a technology, aside from artistic merits, film is obsolete. Digital sensors are better quantitatively in how they deliver resolution and color. The workflow of digital is unmatched compared to film. I can take a weird photo of Raymond and send it out to all of my friends in seconds. <laughs> With film, it would be more like days or weeks. And each digital shot is virtually free. And I can see my results, adjust and adapt right out in the field while I still have access to my subject. While with film, some of you are priced right out of the option, as film and developing have become quite pricey. There's no denying, in my book, however, the feeling or soul that film has. It's a look. It's a vibe. It's an expression of the photographer and the subject. It's, it's a real physical process. Truly analog. No ones and zeros that define the image. It's inherently imperfect. Bringing a personality to images that I just can't typically get with digital. But for reasons of efficiency and workflow, we grab our digital gear most often. So how do we reconcile this? How do we bring the soul of film into our digital imaging? Today is a roundup of how we have done that, and we continue pushing in this area, so we are bound to bring you more ideas in the future. Let's get started now with some of our favorite techniques. It's hard to discuss this topic without mentioning Fujifilm cameras. We own one, the modern day legend, the Fujifilm X100V, with its 35 millimeter equivalent focal length and F2 lens, it's already delivering a film-like look. And in every Fujifilm camera from the last dozen years or so, there are film simulations built right into the camera. You can set the look that you want and you get something very close to shooting with the film that you are selecting in the camera. One understandable limitation is that the film choices are Fujifilm film stock. <laughs> However, the Fujifilm system gives you the flexibility to create your own styles by changing options and parameters once you've chosen some base settings and film simulation. We'd be remiss not to mention Fuji X Weekly run by Richie Roche, who has been a pioneer in developing very accurate film recipes for various brands of film stock with write-ups, suggestions, and sample images for each one alongside the detailed settings. More at the end of this video as to how Raymond and I take advantage of this each summer, and I'm linking Richie's site in the description so that you can check it out. If you shoot Fujifilm, it is a must visit site. Okay, that's all great for Fujifilm owners, but what about others? Nikon and Lumix, two brands that we also shoot, have the capability to give you lower fidelity photography right out of the box. For Nikon Z cameras, in addition to their legacy and quite useful picture controls like vivid, standard, neutral, and black and white, they have 20 creative picture controls that aren't specific film types, but each introduce a creative effect and have parameters that can be set to control some of the image characteristics. Once you start tweaking those, now you're onto something. We've been able to experiment and create vintage looks and emulate grainy black and white film stock and come up with some of our own unique creations. With Lumix, there are several film looks right out of the box with the capability to adjust different parameters to get you the look you want, whether it is a soft vintage look, a high contrast colorful look, black and white, or anywhere in between. The Lumix S5 II has another trick up its sleeve. LUTs. And although these 3D color lookup tables that it supports are primarily intended for video, you can use custom LUTs of your own design or ones that creators make online for your still images. 
I will link to a video in the description where Raymond created an early Digicam look by editing an image in Photoshop, creating a look from it, and uploading it to the camera so that he could get in-camera images with the LUT applied at the moment of capture. Now that gets a bit more technical, but it puts you in control of the look that you're after with some basic Photoshop edits. And then you can upload that LUT to the camera and use it as much as you want. In the same video, I achieved a Tri-X look by using the in-camera parameters without the complexity of a LUT. What I like most about the S5 II and many newer cameras is that we have more options like this than ever. And it's not just the camera body. Lenses like this vintage Nikon 50mm f1.2 can be adapted to most mirrorless bodies, albeit with fully manual operation. Older lenses have simple designs, fewer corrective optics and coatings than modern masterpieces, and these too will bring an analog feeling to your images. It's not that they're bad or obsolete, Older lenses tend to have more personality and render in a certain way. Newer lenses are more scientifically accurate than ever, but for those chasing that film look, the feels, <laughs> vintage lenses can help bring that out. It's one of those things that I can't always describe in words, but I know that look when I see it, and I tend to see it a lot when we dust off some of these older optics. Next up, Leica. Maybe it's the lenses, maybe it's the in-camera software, maybe it's some secret magic. <laughs> Without changing any settings, Leica has the film look mastered. We've shot with the SL, SL2, SL3, Q, Q2, Q3, M10, M11, CL, some of the monochrome variants, and I'm probably missing a couple of other bodies in there. <laughs> but each one has brought a tonal quality that is unmatched and almost always reminds us of film. There are settings that you can adjust, but what we have found is that Leica has dialed in this look so well into their default settings, we don't usually change a thing. <laughs> don't get me wrong, Leica makes expensive cameras that aren't on the top of everyone's list, but for those who have caught the Leica bug, you know what I'm saying about how the images take on their own soul and personality. Very reminiscent of fine art film images. If this is an itch that you're trying to scratch with digital and you shoot a lot, it can be less expensive to buy a Leica digital camera, maybe purchase it used, than to shoot a whole lot of film. We own the Q2 and the SL2, and we have another Leica or two in mind. It's not a decision that we rush into, and we don't always feel like we need the latest Leica or that we need to run and grab them at launch. It's a more pensive decision than some of our impulse buys have been over the years. Moving on, let's talk about phones for a moment. There are camera apps for your phone that will filter the image at capture with film-like qualities. Leica just released Leica Lux, which contains several free looks for your photos that aim to mimic the look and feel coming from a Leica camera and lens. And Richie, who I mentioned earlier, has done that very well with his app called Richie Cam. It has been our preferred phone camera app for quite some time, though the Leica Lux app is awesome. Uh, the Ritchie app gives you styles related to various film stocks. In both of those apps, you can pick a look and run with it. You can hold your camera up and cycle through the various looks to find the one that you want for a particular shot. You can use your different cameras if your phone has multiple. You can select aspect ratios, make exposure adjustments, use flash or not and adjust some other settings. It's the film look that you crave right on the camera that most of us have with us at all times, our phones. The easiest thing to do with a phone or a camera is to not think about adjustments, go with the defaults, and you'll get great images. <laughs> but a little bit of time investment, maybe some internet research, and you might find a recipe, some of your own settings, or an app that will have you experiencing those analog vibes without burning through rolls of film or feeling constrained by the more subdued workflow of film. The choice is yours. My goal is to remind you of some of the different analog-like options that are available to you when shooting digital. And I'll close today showing you one tradition that Raymond and I have at the start of each summer. We dust off our latest X100 camera, which has been the X100V for several years, we open Fuji X Weekly and we load seven custom film recipes from Richie's site onto the camera. 
It's a process both of discovery and negotiation. <laughs> and the reason is this, once we lock them in for the summer, we forbid ourselves from changing them. So we play it safe with some, but others we look for some of the more creative recipes that bring extra personality to our images. They're fun to look at on the website and at the kitchen table. <laughs> but until you are out in the field with the recipes, you really just don't quite know what you're going to get. We do give ourselves permission to shoot raw plus JPEG with the recipes, which would allow us to back them out. But there's a little bit of one-upsmanship between Raymond and I when one of us sets JPEG only and goes straight out the door with the camera. <laughs> we crave the old school creativity. And when you're locked in on a black and white recipe in JPEG only, you're coming home with black and white images just as if you had loaded a roll of Triax or Acros into the camera. Now tell me how you feel. Is film and the film look behind us or does one or the other still have a place in 2024? We'll be shooting plenty of film this summer, but we'll be shooting digitally just as much, maybe with a slant towards achieving that analog look with our digital equipment though. On your way to leave your comments, please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for watching.